This is Dr. Keur Parekh. With me is Dr. Vipul Kapoor, both senior international cardiologist from CIMS Hospital, Sims Hospital, Ahmedabad. We will have Dr. Vipul Kapoor now present the case, which is a very interesting complex angioplasty made easy using IVL intravascular lithotripsy by shockwave technology. Here is Dr. Vipul Kapoor. Uh, this is Dr. Vipul Kapoor, and I will present a brief case history of the patient that we are going to present. This patient was a 73-year-old male having hypertension and unstable angina. He was admitted with anterior wall myocardial infarction. He underwent a successful PTC or angioplasty, but he had a failure to optimally open the calcified proximal LED. With he had residual 50% stenosis at an outside hospital, and he came back to us re-admitted with recurrent angina and heart failure. Re-intervention showed 100% occlusion in a heavily calcified LED. or a left anterior descending artery the interesting part was that his angiogram revealed a quadrifurcation that means he had four arteries coming off from the same uh, site and he had a critical block in the left anterior descending artery along with heavy calcium so we'll start doing his angiography he had a angiography done at outside hospital which showed a patent right coronary artery but led was disease there on repeat angiography here led was totally reoccluded patient was very unstable we started with a pilot wire and we are now crossing the lesion with a pilot 50 hydrophilic wire and slowly it's uh, able to cross the lesion as you can see there is heavy calcification in the proximal led as well as the left main once the wire was crossed using a 1.5 and 2.0 balloon we created a small channel we decided then to go and use ivl intravascular lithotripsy patients outside cardiologist was unable to cross the lesion with a stent despite multiple dilatation with different sized balloons instead of taking the chance and doing the same again we are going ahead with a 2.5 mm by 10 mm intravascular lithotripsy balloon by shockwave as you can see in the adjoining slide IVL system involves a IVL catheter connector and a generator the generator is a compact and rechargeable portable mountable battery powered generator there is a connector which is a smart magnetic connector and there is a intuitive catheter rapid access system over a 0.014 wire and it's introduced like any other over the rapid x system there is a lithotripsy emitters inside the balloon the balloon is fluid uh, mixed with a 50 50% saline and contrast you may have slightly more contrast and once you inflate you will see a rapidly expanding bubble let us now advance the balloon and start generating impulse using the generator you will see accompanying my procedure a video with animation so as i continue to inflate the balloon the balloon is inflated at four atmospheres impulse is generated each each balloon has 10 impulses and up to eight cycles so each cycle has 10 impulses so we will go ahead and start doing the lithotripsy of the artery starting distally and then slowly coming proximally and proximally where there is a calcium multiple inflation and multiple cycles will be done
The shockwave intravascular lithotripsy system creates pulsatile sonic pressure waves to modify calcium in a safe manner. It consists of a compact rechargeable generator, a simple connector cable, and an intuitive catheter, which houses an array of lithotripsy emitters enclosed in an integrated balloon. Through the localized delivery of lithotripsy, the IVL system minimizes trauma, optimizes outcomes, and simplifies procedures. In a standard technique, the IVL catheter is advanced and placed at the lesion using marker bands under angiography. With the integrated balloon expanded to subnominal pressure of four atmospheres by a mixed saline and contrast solution, the fluid within the fully opposed balloon acts as a coupler to facilitate efficient energy transfer of the sonic pressure waves into the vessel wall to reach the calcium. The generator produces three kilovolts of energy that travels through the connector cable and catheter to the lithotripsy emitters once per second. While other treatments can't differentiate between calcium and soft tissue, acoustic pressure waves pass through soft tissue to impact both intimal and medial calcium. With emitters along the length of the balloon, a localized field effect is created. A small electrical discharge at the emitters vaporizes the fluid within the balloon to create a rapidly expanding bubble that generates the sonic pressure waves and then collapses within a few microseconds. When the waves impact the calcium at nearly 50 atmospheres, they create a series of microfractures. After the calcium has been fractured, and trauma to the surrounding soft tissue has been minimized, the vessel becomes more compliant. Once lithotripsy has been completed, the operator can proceed with the preferred treatment strategy to optimize outcomes. By making the treatment of calcified lesions more predictable, IVL is simplifying complex procedures. Depending how calcium presents, the number of IVL pulses to achieve an optimal result are different. When the IVL balloon expands in eccentric calcium, the emitter moves away from the calcium, since the soft tissue is not constrained. The farther the emitter is from the calcium, the less energy is able to reach it, so more pulses are needed. While each pulse's energy is identical, shock waves crack concentric lesions quicker due to the rigid ring of calcium that traps the energy, leaving no other paths to dissipate other than cracking. Waves also reflect off calcium and impact the calcium in the opposite wall. In eccentric lesions, most of the waves pass through the soft intima, and there is negligible benefit of reflecting waves. Regardless of how much energy is required, the efficacy of the shock waves is evident under angiography. Now we will go ahead and advance uh, OCT, Optical Coherence Tomography Catheter by Abbott, across the lesion. We had tried to advance the lesion, or, uh, tried to advance the OCT earlier, but we were unable due to heavy calcium. As you can see, the OCD catheter is now advanced easily and Dr. Vipul Kapoor has moved to the console of OCT to guide me and help me with the interpretation. We are now going ahead with the OCT imaging and I'll pass it pass to Dr. Vipul Kapoor to explain the OCT findings. So this is the OCT catheter advanced uh, across the image and as you can see this image shows the OCT catheter on the left side going across the distal portion of the lesion and on the right side of the image you can see the frozen OCT image. Now with the white marker there where you see right at about uh, 11 o'clock to uh, 3 o'clock position you can see that that actually signifies or denotes 
calcium. So, you can see the amount of calcium in the lesion and the one at about 7 o'clock there is a dissection that, that is basically produced by the balloon dilatations which were done in the artery. Now, as we go further, you can see that this is uh, again this is the OCT image and uh, what you are seeing in the transfer section below there is a longitudinal uh, section of the arterial wall. So, you, what OCT does is it tells us the actual length of the artery which needs uh, stenting right what is the morphology or what is the structure of the arterial wall what the block is made up of and how much calcium and other abnormalities that are there in the artery so that you can plan your intervention right in a successful manner. So, that you can give the best possible outcome to the patient and as you can see the images are so clear and crisp that you can actually make out very easily what the arterial wall is made up of. So, now as you can see IVL has done a uh, fantastic job right what it does is it alleviates the challenges of calcified cardiovascular disease. So, as you can see in the OCT image on the right side you can see how IVL actually cracks the calcium right both superficial as well as deep and both thin as well as thick calcium. Right, And once it does that, then the passage of the other hardware like you can say your OCT, the other balloons and the stent becomes very, very easy to track. Let us now go ahead and start planning the OCT. So, OCT is helping us to decide the length of the stent and diameter. We are using 2.75 millimeter Onyx DES. 38 millimeter long and as you see stent was able to cross the calcific lesion easily without need of post dilatation after IVL. So IVL was able to help us soften the entire artery. Even the stent inflation went very smooth. This is very different from passed when the previous operator was unable to cross with the stent. The stent dilatation usually is 30 seconds and as soon as we were done with the stent dilatation we see the large first diagonal at the quadrifurcation. As you see there is a left main, then there is a large circumflex, then there is a ramus and immediately after ramus is another large ramus or a very high diagonal. The high diagonal shows significant stenosis which was not there originally. So the question that arises is what happened? Is this a thrombus which got dislodged or something else? So we have gone ahead and we are going ahead with a repeat OCT. So the OCT is done now and we'll ask Dr. Vipul Kapoor to comment on the OCT findings. Uh, we do an OCT again, OCT run again after uh, deploying the stent and as you can see in this image uh, there is a fly through uh, stent image on the OCT and you can see the stent struts uh, the OCT uh, image showing uh, the well opposed stent, very well implanted stent, uh, no areas of malapposition, no areas of um, uh, you know edge dissection uh, from the distal um, end and also <coughs> apparently at the proximal end. But what is interesting here to be noted is now the, the point where the OCT is coming at one of the major diagonal branches and that I will point you just in a second and this is the one yes at this point. Now, here you can typically see um, that there is a uh, dissection, yeah, exactly at this point where they are now freezing the image, there is a dissection flap which is extending into the ostium of the major diagonal and that is where uh, the problem uh, lies and that is where the diagonal actually appeared to close off and this is the point we need to address and that, why, that is why the decision was taken to actually put in a second stent at the ostium of the diagonal using a reverse T technique so that we can salvage that major diagonal as well. So, this is a case of clear cut dissection in the ostium of the large diagonal. Since patient is having angina and it is a moderately sized diagonal, it was decided to do a stenting. So what stenting, what technique should we use? When we do main vessel stenting 
and subsequent to stenting a side branch coming off the main vessel is now newly diseased as in this case the best option in this scenario is reverse T stenting so we are going ahead and doing reverse T stenting with another onyx stent placed through the diagonal artery so first we opened up the strut of the previous strand with a 2 mm balloon created a proper space and very easily again we could cross as a reverse stenting into the diagonal through the proximal struts of the main vessel stent having done that reverse T stenting was done and finally kissing balloon was done with excellent results thank you very much